Step into the unknown with Paranormal M, where every story is a puzzle waiting to be solved. Hit subscribe and hit notifications. And if you can, hit the like button and get ready for a journey that will challenge your perceptions. Scratching Noises Before I start, I'm a very skeptical guy. I don't even know if this is paranormal or not, and I just don't have an explanation for it. In my house, I'm the only person who has the least paranormal encounters. Maybe this one, if I consider it paranormal. So this happened like three years ago. It was around 2 a.m. in my bedroom. I'm just drawing on my laptop, and I'm sitting right next to the door. We have one dog, and she always sleeps in my room. Suddenly, there's this scratching noise on the other side of my door. It's not fast nor loud. If I try to imagine, it sounds like it's a long, continuous scratch with one finger. It randomly stops, and then a few seconds later, it continues again. Look at my dog, she's just sleeping. I tried to determine the height of this scratching noise by listening closely. It seemed like the sound is around the height of the doorknob. I tried getting my phone to video record, and my idea was to open the door quickly to record, but of course, I was too scared to do it. The next day I checked it, and there's no scratch marks. This scratching happened maybe around a minute. It just stopped, and it didn't happen ever again, but we live in a different house now. The only thing I can think of it is maybe it was some animal, maybe a mouse because I did have a mouse problem. But from what I observed, the sound's height seemed to be not low enough for a mouse. So another thing I thought of is a person. But nobody in my family is a sleepwalker. No one's also a prankster. I'm an only child in the house, and I'm sure it's not a break-in. There's no signs of it. Nothing was stolen and our dog wasn't barking. This is just a short experience. I don't have proof for it, but to be honest, I don't really care if you believe the story, since I mostly don't believe paranormal stuff on the internet. Mouses. Because I think it's mouses now, not mice. I forget. They can climb up your wall pretty good. <laughs> All kinds of wires in there. Off to a weird start. Seven inch tall shadow silhouette in my bedroom. What do I do? Preface. I live with my wife in a home that we recently purchased around six months ago. I've never had an experience like this before, and I'm not sure what I should do or if I should do anything at all. Last night at approximately 3.45 a.m. CST, I woke up suddenly, rolled over, and saw a seven-foot-tall dark silhouette standing over my wife's side of the bed. I thought it was seven inches. I flinched, jumped out of bed, took my eyes off. Just maybe half a second. It had disappeared. There was nothing there that could have been mistaken for what I saw. Like a coat rack or anything of the sort. It was dark, no lights were on, and I had just woken up from sleeping. However, my eyes were adjusted to the darkness, and whatever it was seemed far darker than anything else in the room. Like a solid black, as if you drew a solid, sharpie figure on a dark gray piece of paper. The silhouette was very tall. It had no details on its body or face. No hair, no ears, no impressions for eyes. It looked three-dimensional as I could make out a radius around the dome of its head and neck. It had broad shoulders, as opposed to a lot of similar reports I've seen online. It looked slightly hunched over and was staring directly at me. I say this because it looked like it had a small forward tilt to its head. I saw its full body from where I imagined its knees were. Its midsection tapered slightly inward from the broadness of the shoulders, and from the waist down it looked the same. No gaps of shadow between where its legs would have been as if it was wearing a cloak that draped down to its feet, all in a deep, solid black color. I looked at it for about two seconds before I jumped up. I noticed it immediately when I rolled over, but didn't understand what I was seeing until after a moment or two. 
I suspect my delayed reaction was due to the fact that I was asleep shortly before and I'd kind of get, just get my bearings on what was even happening. I have no idea what that was or what to do. I remained awake for about an hour afterward before I fell back asleep. I wake up for work around 6 a.m. If anybody has seen this or if you have any advice for how I should handle this, please message me. I mentioned to my wife that only that I saw something strange last night, and that she should tell me if she sees anything odd in the future. I don't want to scare her. Sure scared the hell out of me. Having visions slash possible apparitions. Hi all. I recently have been having these visions at work. I'm a non-medical caregiver, or just an old person babysitter, more or less. I've been with the family I'm with now for about six months or so. To preface or contextualize, I usually come in in the morning to clean stuff. The lady sleeps through the shift and I just wait till her daughter comes back. Sometimes I have to be up there real early and I fall asleep. Normally, it's just a normal nap. If the lady wakes up for some reason, I'd jump up and help her. But a few times I've had these weird and seemingly religious visions. So one day I fell asleep and I saw myself asleep on the couch. It was an out-of-body experience, so I saw myself asleep on the couch and this middle-aged Asian lady came up and hugged me around my neck from behind. I knew intrinsically that this was God, which already was crazy since I considered myself an atheist. I woke up confused, but well, I eventually fell back asleep. The second time I saw a little white girl with an iPad. She came up to me and said that she would protect me, but not to look directly at him. I woke up confused again, but well, once again fell back asleep anyway. Most of the time when I sleep at my lady's house, I wear my jacket and pull my hood over my eyes to make it darker so it's easier to sleep. But this time I opened my eyes and there was a man standing in front of me. I was really scared, but I couldn't move. I woke up and stayed up the rest of the time this time. A month or so passes and I fall asleep there again. This time I saw flashing images of gory faces. And I saw someone tilting their head back until their neck snapped. After the snap, a voice started chanting, Kill yourself, kill yourself, over and over, and so loud, it almost physically hurt my ears. I partially woke up super scared, saw a dark silhouette in the corner. After that, I had quit seeing any visions in my sleep. Up until a few days ago, when I fell asleep and it was an out-of-body experience again. A portal opened up in the floor. A monstrous hand grabbed my ankle and was trying to pull me down into it. But right as it was about to succeed, a portal opened above me and a humanoid hand pulled me up into it. It was God again, but she reassured me she'd protect me and then I woke up. That's the last thing I saw. But today, when I fell asleep, I heard a bunch of scratching noises behind me. So that's the most recent thing. I talked to my therapist about it a month ago and she said that she doesn't think I'm schizophrenic or that it's a mental health thing at all. So I laid at y'all's feet to theorize. The Deer and Bathroom Ghost This happened like eight or nine-ish years ago. I don't know if they're connected, but they happened about a month away from each other. The first one was while I was on the road with my family. We were driving home after working from the fair. We were on a long stretch of flat field. It was night times, so there's nothing to see. We get to an old stoplight and I can see something far away in the distance. It looks biggish and hunched. It was hunched over, and almost on all fours. The closest thing I can say it looked like was deer. I make eye contact with it, or at least I think I do. There were two pinpoint lights. It then seemed to be getting closer. It wasn't walking, just kind of shifting closer to the car. 
I'm starting to internally panic, but the light is still red, so there's not much I can do. Eventually, the car starts going again, and when I turn around, the deer is just kind of where the car used to be sitting. I blink, and it's gone. One month later, I'm home in the bathroom. I hear something calling my name. It doesn't sound like my parents, but it doesn't sound exactly like my favorite game character. Or rather, it does. At first, it says my name slow and almost like a question. Then it just starts to call it out. I bite my tongue because my skin is crawling and something isn't right. After like a minute, I'm like, yeah? No response. Eventually finish and ask my parents if they called my name. Mom was gone and my dad was downstairs. Apparently, my mom has a similar experience in the bathroom while she was in the army. She was just doing her thing and an unknown voice said, You will marry, insert my dad's name here. She calls it the bathroom ghost. Would you want to know that your house is haunted? Long story short, I grew up in a haunted house. It's full of many different spirits, but that's normal. When I was younger, there were a lot more malevolent and sinister ones. That was until we put up a few hundred-plus-year-old you know, horseshoes. Never heard that one. My childhood home is being sold, and the owners don't fully know what they're buying. We've been the sole owners of that home since around two months of it being built, which is over 20 years now. I recently visited, and the spirits were definitely acting up in a bad way. I don't think they liked the transition. Their antics keep escalating as we wrap up loose ends. My concern is the new owners taking down the horseshoe thinking it's for decoration instead of protection. My old room has an evil, vengeful spirit that stands next to the window at night who wants to get in but can't. Everybody who slept in my room has gotten the same unnerving feeling, not to mention hearing it pace around on the outside of the house. I told my mom that we should probably let the owners know since it's only fair, but my grandma believes the past is none of the new owner's business. It's their situation to deal with. Would you want to know what your new house is home to multiple entities and that the decorative horseshoes keep the most violent ones out? I think my voice broke. Saw a black hooded figure from the shoulder up. I live in a rural area on a dirt road with a big front yard. There's a garage halfway up the driveway. It has a motion sensor light. Every night this light comes, and this has happened a thousand times over. Normally if I see it pop on, I turn off the lights to see if I can see a deer or a rabbit. In the past, I've seen deer, rabbits, sand on occasion my neighbor's cat. Well, tonight, the light came on and I looked and I didn't see anything. I kept looking and slowly I noticed it. I didn't see it at first, right on the edge of the light. I could see what looked like a hooded figure. I could see it from the shoulders up. It didn't move at all. It was totally static. I could see what looked like the perfect outline of a hood, but its face was completely dark. I stared at it for over a minute. That's when I started getting a horrible feeling. I immediately took the fan out of my window, shut it, locked it, closed the blind, taking a step away. After the rush of what the fuck was that, I thought I had to do something. I'd left sitting next to the garage something or other, and whatever it was, the light was hitting it perfectly to fool my brain into thinking it was shaped like that. I thought how stupid it was that I was scared of what was clearly nothing. That, or it could have been, you know, somebody trying to break in. So I walked back up to the window and slightly moved the blind so I could peek, and of course it was still there. Hadn't moved at all. Even after telling myself it was nothing and thinking that it was stupid, I was freaked the hell out. Felt like I was, or rather it, was staring right back at me. This went on until the light went off. So the obvious thing in my mind was to wave the light to come back on and see if it was still there. 
I sure as hell didn't want to go outside and turn it on, so I waited, hoping something would trigger it. A couple hours went by and of course it didn't come on. I finally went outside and got it to turn on for myself and, well, I didn't see anything that could have caused it. Went back inside, shut off the lights and thought for sure it would still be there. Well, it fucking wasn't. I stood there trying to see it, but it wasn't there. There's only two explanations I can think of. Either it was a person or I hallucinated. I've never hallucinated, nor do I have any kind of pre-existing illness that could lead to that. I don't think it was a person. I didn't move an inch. I walked away for like a second, closing the blind. And surely, if it were a person at that point, they would have booked it. I'm actually still shocked about it. I googled it, and apparently others have seen a hooded figure they say it was seven feet tall. I have no idea how tall that was. It was so dark and, oh, last thing on my mind. It just looked human, at least human height. Unsettling Encounter in My Childhood Home A Lifelong Mystery I'm sharing this experience because it still sends shivers down my spine to this day. Growing up, my family lived in an old house on the outskirts of town, which my parents had inherited from my grandparents. It was a beautiful, sprawling property with a rich history, but it also had its quirks. When I was around 12 years old, I started noticing strange occurrences in my bedroom. Doors would creak open and shut on their own, and I'd hear faint whispers in the dead of night. At first, I thought it was just the house settling, but as time went on, the events became more frequent and intense. One night, I woke up to find a figure standing in my bedroom doorway. It was tall, gaunt, and imposing, with eyes that seemed to bore into my soul. I was paralyzed with fear, unable to move or speak. The figure didn't move or make a sound, it just stood there watching me. The encounter lasted only a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity. When I finally worked up the courage to scream, the figure vanished into thin air. I was left shook, but also curious. Who or what was this entity and why was it haunting my child at home? Over the years, I've tried to rationalize the experience, but I've come to realize that it was something truly inexplicable. My parents never believed me, thinking I was just a scared kid with an overactive imagination, but I know what I saw and it stayed with me to this day. The strange thing is, after my parents divorced and I moved out of the house, the occurrences stopped. It was as if the entity was tied to that specific location, or perhaps even to my family's history. I've tried to research the property's past, but I've come up empty-handed. I'm sharing this story in hopes that somebody might be able to offer some insight or guidance. Has anyone else experienced something similar? Do you think it's possible for our location to be haunted by a specific entity? Or was I just experiencing some kind of psychological phenomenon? I lived with a paranormal entity. I can't pinpoint exactly when it first began, or when I first began to experience this best I can remember is I was around the age of 10 or 11, although it's possible the occurrences began a little bit earlier than this. However, I vividly remember being scared of my bedroom window once it got dark outside because of what I regularly saw. On numerous occasions I would see the same face at the bottom left corner of the outside window and it would just be looking in at me. For context, my bedroom at the time was on the second floor of a house, so... No possibility that this was somebody walking by the window, unless they were over 15 feet tall. Despite this occurring over 20 years ago now, for context, I'm in my mid-30s, I can still recall that face. It was distinctly male and thin, unkept hair. The skin pulled in as though the figure was starved. If I had to age the figure, my best guess would be in its 30s, maybe 40s. Oddly, the one detail I can remember is the eyes. The reason I can remember this much detail is because it was always the same face, always in the same position. 
Seeing this figure always gave me a sense of dread, and I would do whatever I could to pretend it wasn't there watching me. I would suddenly glue my eyes to my TV or pick up a book and start reading, hoping it would leave me alone. I didn't have curtains in my bedroom, so I didn't have that as an option back then. And whatever I called my parents to check, they never saw anything. Simply pass it off as my mind, playing tricks on me. That dread I felt whenever I saw the figure would stay with me for the rest of the night. At least, until I managed to fall asleep. When I did sleep, I would have upsetting dreams almost every night. Dreams of being chased, and a lot of cases killed. I remember speaking to my therapist about a recurring dream I would have where I was chased and thrown off a bridge. This is a bridge I had to cross on my walk to school, but they didn't read much into it. To this day, I have issues sleeping. My partner has mentioned several times I have a tendency to whimper in my sleep as if frightened. I can never sleep through a full night either, waking up at least two or three times for no reason. I also still try to avoid going past windows at night, unless the windows are drawn first, and even then I still feel slightly uneasy. It wasn't just seeing the figure in the window either. There would be occasions I would go and turn on the light in my room, but it wouldn't work. It would turn on and the bulb would do something, but the light was very dim. Just a dark orange glow, barely lighting anything up. The first time this happened, I instinctively knew something was wrong, and every subsequent time instilled that same anxiety. The bit I never got to understand was why it happened. Every time it did, I would quickly turn the light off and call my parents, and they would come up and turn the light on for me, and everything worked fine. It was only ever when I was alone that the light played up like this. Just as it was only ever when I was alone, I would see the figure in the window. As if it was trying to mess with my mind, or just didn't want to make its presence known to anybody but me. After several years of this, my sister started to become frightened of a grey figure stalking my father around the house which only she could ever see. On one occasion, she started screaming and crying for apparently no reason. When we managed to calm her down enough to speak, she told us she saw the figure reaching out trying to stab my father in the back. It was at that point I definitely knew something wasn't right, confided in the school chaplain. We weren't a religious family in any sense, but I attended a Catholic high school, and at this point I didn't really know who else to turn to. The school chaplain came over to the house, blessed the premises. Whilst it wasn't a full exorcism, he made sure to bless every room, anointing the doorways with holy water. Whatever it was we experienced in that, oh, all oh, the strange occurrences just stopped following after the visit from the chaplain. We moved house roughly 18 months after that. I've lived in several houses since then and have never experienced the figure, but as I mentioned, I'm still anxious about going near windows at night. So it affects her pretty strong and still with me and very real. Whatever it was, I did experience. Whatever my family experienced, I can't say for sure. Perhaps a ghost or some malevolent entity, I really have no idea. But I wanted to share my experience nonetheless. Ghost in High Heels This has been happening all year, and it's almost time for me to leave my dorm for the summer. The school year ended so quickly. I've been wanting to share this, but it's been happening too much, and it didn't really bother me. Until now, where the damn thing liked to walk to my door and then just stopped and walked again for a hot three minutes and freaked me out, so I needed a way to cope. So when I first moved here, I was alone. My roommates are older than me, so they were out with their friends and stuff. I'm fresh meat, so I was just in my room reading some comics and playing games. I was enjoying my own little space away from home. Well, a couple of hours passed, and it's nighttime, and I'm still alone. I had to use the bathroom, and when I went in to do my business, I heard these footsteps. Someone was in high heels, and of course, I didn't think much of it, just a person or so I thought. Maybe a person walking the hallways in high heels. The thing that kind of threw me off was the fact that the hallway floors are made of carpet. It sounded like they were walking on solid tile floor, like the footsteps were very loud and the bathroom was far from the hallway. But again, 
didn't think much of it and continued with the rest of my night. The next day I was still alone. My roommates were still out, and I had used the bathroom again. And as I was, I heard those same exact footsteps, loud high heels, just like the previous day. Still didn't think much of it. I was just a tad bit creeped out given that it was dead silent and they weren't talking or anything of that sort. But this time I hurried up and just went into my room. I know that seems weird, but I'm freaked out very easily. So the next day, I was still alone. Had to use the bathroom again. And this time it was so much more creepy. I heard the footsteps again, only this time they sounded like they were in my dorm, right in front of the bathroom. So, of course, I called out, and immediately the footsteps stopped. It was just dead silent. My heart was beating so fast from the previous encounters, if that's the right word to use. I thought it was one of my roommates, so I called out again, and nothing. I hurried and finished, and slowly opened the door to find no one there. I was so scared. Bro. I couldn't hear any breathing or somebody walking back. They just stopped and I couldn't hear them again for the rest of the day, which creeped me out more. So finally, the next day, one of my roommates comes back in the dorm and I was very happy. We introduced each other, talked a bit, and hung out. Then I gathered the courage to ask him if he was in the dorm the previous day, to which he said no. Now, I didn't shit my pants on the spot because, well, could have been one of those other roommates, but I kept his answer in the back of my head. I didn't tell him about what happened the previous days, since I feel like that would have ruined the vibe and the fun that we had. Like him thinking, huh, this guy's an idiot. I was just overthinking a lot and just happy I had somebody there with me. No ghost footsteps that night. So the next day, our last two roommates came back. It was a blast. We all talked, got to know each other, and chilled. Then I asked my other two roommates if they were in the dorms the days I was alone, to which they said no. That's when I kind of shat my pants. I still didn't tell them anything and the day went by. It was night and everybody was with me and, what a coincidence, was asleep. I had to use the bathroom and I hesitated a bit since the damn high heels thing. I ruled out people walking in the hallway since the floor is made of carpet and the sound wouldn't have been heard or it would be very quiet unless somebody was running. And of course, I ruled out my roommates. And then whoever walking in front of the bathroom door when I was there also creeped me out. And I am a very firm believer of ghosts and spirits. So that was my next guess, and I was right. So I used the bathroom and you guessed it, footsteps again in front of the bathroom door. And this time I just stayed silent and the steps continued. There was no pausing or them fading away. The steps literally sounded like if you repeated a part on a video. They were constantly walking in place, not getting louder, nor fading away. And in the bathroom, that's when I knew for sure I had to be a ghost. And then it only proved me right, because as soon as I got up from the toilet, they just stopped. I wish I was making all this shit up, but I'm really not, and to make it worse, I forgot to turn the light on. That's on the side of the dorm I'm in, so it was pitch black. Bruh. I washed my hands and stuff and ran right into my room and literally called my mom, who was also a firm believer in ghosts. I told her everything. She told me to just calm down and asked if I was okay, and to just pray. So yeah, that's about it. The ghosts have been doing stuff like this, and I'm pretty used to it, somewhat at least. But a couple of minutes ago, the thing stopped at my door and continued walking, which again never happened. So I thought that I would just share this. And W Mom. Every time she comes over, she prays and tells it that it's going to beat its ass. It doesn't help that me and her watch Mr. Bolland late at night in my room whenever she visits. And I know that it doesn't seem real the ways I explained it, but I swear to you, this has happened the very first of the school year, and my roommates don't hear it. I still haven't told them. Thanks for reading. Hopefully the ghost lady will read this and stop scaring me. I'm just a freshman all alone and I don't deserve this. My Experience with the Grim Reaper I'm a 23-year-old female, and I've always grown up with weird or unexplained experiences in my life. 
That's ever since I was one or two. I've suffered from night terrors, two years old when it started, and sleep paralysis. So as I got older, I knew how to control that. But really, the sleep paralysis and nightmares were normal to me, but seeing what I saw at five years old has always stuck with me. I lived in a small house in the neighborhood in a cul-de-sac. I was on the bulb end of the cul-de-sac. My room was located on the second floor and my window faced the neighbor next to the right. One night I was playing in my room with my toys. It was pretty late. I didn't really have a bedtime. I kind of just went to sleep when I was tired and it was usually reasonable, so my mom never had trouble with that. But it was really late and it was a full moon. The sky was pitch black and there was no stars. But it was calm and quiet and there wasn't a single person outside. I knew that because my house faced all my neighbors' houses in the front. While I was playing, I noticed a tall and lanky black figure wearing some cloak. I don't know, every time I tell the story my family thinks it's somebody pulling a prank or it was Halloween. Definitely wasn't Halloween though. But this figure was so tall, like the top of its head reached the bottom of my windowsill and it was carrying a scythe. I thought it was some farm tool because I didn't know what a scythe even was. A scythe is a farm tool. The more you know. But this person or whatever it was walked slowly in between my house and the neighbor's house and I remember seeing the reflection of the moonlight hitting the scythe. It slowly walked to the backyard and then disappeared. Ever since I had seen the Grim Reaper in my dreams, and from one crazy shroom trip, I saw it twice in 2022 and two of my family members died and I haven't seen it since. Long post regarding a childhood. Something in her house growing up tried to kill myself and my sisters, and really messed with me for years. This is very long-winded. Sorry, a lot's happened. I was just reminiscing about this old house that we lived in last night, so I decided I want to get any input from here on what you think might have, well, what I've been dealing with. It's such a blur to me looking back now that I'm 34. I'm not sure about what was in my mom's house because I was young. I lived there like 13 to 16. My room was at the top of the house, which I initially thought would be amazing for privacy as I was the oldest of four sisters. We lived with my mom. This room had curved ceilings and small little doors on some of the walls. They were little storage spaces. I swear it was always cold. I lasted in that room just over a year until I couldn't take it. I had sleep paralysis dreams almost every night, sometimes multiple times a night. Most of the time in my dream it would look like my mom, but a scarier looking version holding down my feet and glaring at me. The other type of dream I had is hard to explain. When my mom, a sleep paralysis demon, would be holding down my feet, I could see her and hear everything so clearly. With these dreams, my vision always seemed fuzzy and it felt like I was being picked up and carried. Never saw anything during these dreams, but I was always horrified. It felt horrible. Before I moved out of that room, I was so paranoid at like 15. I had put two locks on the inside of my door over time and I started setting up obstacles, hoping that it would let me sleep unbothered. Looking back, it's so strange, like I was trying to lock whatever it was out, but I think I was just locking myself in there with it. At least, when I started sleeping downstairs, the dream stopped. Another time my mom was out of town. Pretty frequent for her. So it was my three younger sisters and I at home. We had pellet stoves for supplemental heat and on the main floor and in the basement. We were all very versed in using them. Myself and my middle sister filled the stoves up pretty early in the morning because we were talking and we distinctly remembered doing everything like normal. I woke up to somebody banging on my window, so I popped up angry like, Who? Until I heard this man. He said, Your house is on fire, which immediately woke me up. I got my sisters and dogs out of the house safely and called the fire department. 
I was only 16 or 17, and I was the oldest. The house was never on fire. Both of the switch and knob things for ventilation were switched off. It was a miracle that we survived. I truly believe something in the house did that to us. I went back to that house for Christmas like seven years ago with my partner. We slept in my old room. I had a sleep paralysis demon, but I didn't see my mom or feel like I was falling or anything. My partner didn't say that anything weird happened, but he did insist that we go home, so I know something rattled him. I've gotten really into the paranormal since. I've contemplated reaching out to the new owners to see if they have any stories, or if they'd be open to me coming and investigating. It really caused me a ton of trauma when I was younger. And to kind of understand what was messing with me and possibly helping the new owners would make me feel pretty good. Three family encounters at the same time in different locations. Anyway, last night I woke up out of nowhere having a full-on panic and anxiety attack. I've never gotten one before. It was full-on fast heartbeat, cold sweats, chills, and a dreadful, horrible feeling. As if I'd gotten news somebody had died. I wasn't having any nightmares, I don't even recall dreaming. I started praying for my family, tossed and turned until I fell asleep. At 6 a.m. I was getting ready for work, and I sat on the bed, and as soon as I sat down, I got that same feeling. I was afraid I was going to have to, you know... Maybe I was going to get into a car crash or something on my way to work. I didn't mention it to anybody and I went about my day. My sister moved into her new place today and I called her to see how she's doing. She told me that around 2 a.m. she woke up because her bedroom door creaked open and she saw someone peeping in. She thought it was her mother-in-law and she's with her for the night and my sister's husband passed away once years ago. <laughs> Sorry. My sister didn't have her glasses on, but she was able to see the shadow of the head peeking in and her dog was growling at the door and eventually the door slammed open, but no one was there. She said she tried her best to brush it off and went back to sleep. After our discussion, my brother texted our group chat. He was saying that he had the weirdest dream. He dram that my sister and our niece were in his apartment, and there was a man with them but the man had no face and he was pale. He also said he knew that it wasn't her sister or her niece, but something pretending to be them. He said he felt it very vividly and he kept telling them to go away and he knew it wasn't them, but they kept mocking him and then he woke up. All of our encounters happened at the same time. Now we're all eerie because as I mentioned before, when paranormal stuff happens, usually a life-changing event or family death occurs. This is just the first time this happens where we all experience something at the same time, all living in separate locations. Does anyone know if my family is haunted or why we keep experiencing paranormal activities and what we can possibly do or why did we all experience it all at the same time? Thought? Comments? Something was shuffling around the house. So I have very bad insomnia, which leads to me staying awake most nights. This happened a couple of weeks ago. We recently changed the flooring in the house from a regular carpet to wood floor. As a result, from our walls being thin and my new door not fitting properly, I can hear everything going on in the house, crystal clear. I was laying down trying to sleep, and it was around 2.33 a.m. My dad had already left to work, and my sister was asleep. And so was my dad's wife and my little brother. The thing is, is my little sister's door makes a loud creak when it opens, and I can always hear any door in the house opening since it's a small house and my room is almost in the middle. Well, as I'm laying there with the house dead silent, suddenly there's this shuffling sound coming from the living room, which is just outside my room. It's just going in circles around the living room. It's not footsteps, it's shuffling. The closest sounds I can describe is when my little brother gets upset instead of walking like normal, he shuffles his feet, but not taking footsteps and instead sliding his feet across the wood floor. 
The other sound that's similar to what I heard is when I, I bare my jeans without shoes. I think they mean wear. When I wear my jeans without shoes, the length of them is too long for me, but that's how I like them. That, however, makes it so that even when I take a step, the jeans don't get off the floor and drag and create a shuffling noise. Back to what happened. I keep hearing a shuffling noise, and it's not consistent. It kind of shuffles for a bit and then stops, shuffles and stops. It does this, and it just goes in circles in the living room. The kitchen is tiles. There'd be no shuffling. Thought when I first heard it, great, a rat's in the house. But no. Doesn't seem to go on the tiles, it just keeps shuffling around in circles in the living room. And it gets worse, because when I start to hear it, it shuffles closer to the hallway where my door's at. Now my little brother will sometimes run down the hallway with his fingers and nails on the wall, so I know what that sounds like. But, well... It's resonating so loudly in my room. So whatever it is, start slowly running fingers or something across the wall, slowly moving to my door. It's moving its body or what sounds like a hand across the hallway, slowly until it reaches my door, then goes quiet for what feels like a couple of minutes. I think whatever it is has stopped and gone away, then when I hear something scratching at my door, right about then, it's not fast or frantic scratching, it's slow, purposeful scratching. Just slow scratching from the top of the door to the bottom and repeat. After a while of that happening, I hear it shuffling back to the living room. It quickly turned into a cycle. It would just shuffle around in the living room, then after a while it would scratch the wall to my room and scratch at my door and then back to the living room. This cycle kept repeating until sometime in the morning. I started seeing the first sign of light, and basically as soon as the first sign of light came, I mustered up the courage to leave my room and check. There wasn't anything there, and all the doors were locked, and like I said, my room's dead in the middle of the house. The walls are thin. My door doesn't fit properly, so I can hear any of the doors open, and it's something I've grown used to. I would have been able to hear if anybody opened one of those doors, but that's never happened. I'm sure it was probably a, well, a big rat, but I don't know any rat on the west coast that would shuffle around the living room, scratch the wall slowly, stop at my door, scratch at it for a bit, then repeat the cycle over and over again. Whatever it was, it freaked me out bad, and I'm not the type to get scared easily. Whatever it was shook me to my core. Kids would run out of our haunted house in the middle of the night. So we purchased our second home, a two-story with a full basement. It's unfinished. This home is in Colorado, actually not far from Columbine High. Lots of strange things happened in that house. Most nights I had a man or a shadow man who stood at the foot of my bed. Eventually I got tired of him. I put a line of salt down at the door entrance of all the bedrooms, asked him to stay out of my room. After that, the figure stayed out of my room, but stood in the hallway, and in the hallway was a linen closet that abutted our oldest son's bedroom. His closet, actually. The linen closet was a strange thing. It would stay closed, and I would literally kind of close it, hear it click, stand there, it would stay shut, I'd turn my back, walk to the stairs, and it would slowly open. At the time, the boys were about eight, six, and three. Our oldest had a best friend who would sometimes spend the night, sometimes outside in the camper on the trampoline. The last time he slept over was an October night. The boys stayed up late playing video games before I shooed them off to bed. I heard them goofing off as young boys do. They got the go to sleep or else warning a couple of times. I checked on them before I decided to crash around 1.30. At about 3 a.m. we were awoken by a screaming boy, and it wasn't my son. Let's call him Brian. He was standing on the stairs wearing Pokemon pajamas, shivering in fear. Of course, I took him downstairs to find out what was going on. After a cup of hot chocolate, I found out Brian awoke to see a transparent-looking young girl in a white nightdress. I know, so trite. I was coming out of the closet in my son's room. He freaked out, then screamed, and she disappeared. 
Poor Brian never slept over again, nor did any other kids. I had to drive him home at 4 a.m. None of my children ever saw the apparition again. I suspect she couldn't walk out of the closet because of the mess of Legos. We had other things happen from time to time, and I did some research on the house and the neighborhood. Turns out it was built where Native Americans lived, perhaps buried their families. It was a place the Ute tribe usually summered. I've lived in a few different places that were haunted. Possibly I'm sensitive. Nursing home slash former orphanage haunting. Hi. I used to work food service in a nursing home that was converted from an orphanage. This happened a few weeks after I unfortunately witnessed a resident having a medical emergency in pass. I don't know if that was the resident's spirit as a lot of people passed in the building. There was a cemetery directly outside the restaurant that was used when the building was an orphanage. But anyways, I'm minding my own business, getting ready to lock up and close out the tables and the POS when the lights in the dining room go out. I got a really bad feeling, but left it alone because I had to turn the lights off anyways. So I bring the dirty linen back to the kitchen with me and lock the pantry. When I turn around, the dirty linen's fallen off and basically completely off the cart and now on the floor. I pick it up and I start hearing a chair being dragged around the dining room. It was impossible for anybody to be in the dining room because I had already locked the doors going into the dining room. Somebody would have had to come through the kitchen they would have to be going pretty fast. I could have left the clock out, but not before I heard a giggle from the dining room. Anyways, I got home safely, but had to walk through the creepily lit utility basement. This was a particularly intense night, but weird stuff happened all the time there. Sometimes me and my coworkers would hear our names being called, and we would kind of just be tripped by nothing in one specific area of the dining room. I mauled my sleep paralysis demon. Hi, this is a story from maybe a month or two ago. I don't have sleep paralysis that often, but when I do, I have sleep paralysis. <laughs> but when I do, I'm on my back like most people. This month, I had been playing this weird Roblox children's orphanage game where at nights you have to defend yourself against monster children. This likely contributed to my sleep paralysis experience. Anyways, that night I got off my computer and settled into bed on my back. I fell asleep for some time until I woke up and my room was much darker than normal. I saw a red eye staring at me from on top of me. For whatever reason, I wasn't tolerating any of it this day. I'm not sure how much my dreams might have bled into my sleep paralysis, but I got mad as hell. I was feeling vicious. I started using all of my strength to growl like a dog at the demon trying to get it off me. It stayed on top of me and I kind of felt like it was surprised at my aggression. Normally I just stay frozen in fear, but I reached my limit then. I started doing sit-ups trying to break out of sleep paralysis and at the same time biting and scratching the demon. I did this for like 10 minutes until it disappeared in front of me. I could then sit up. This was the only time I had sleep paralysis and didn't wake up terrified because I think I messed him up bad. If my sleep paralysis demon is reading this, try it again, nerd. Next time, I'll fall asleep in Wolverine claws. Seriously, though, I'm unsure if this was mostly a dream or real sleep paralysis, but definitely a unique one. Sharing a room with a demon. My entire life I've lived in haunted houses. When I was six, we moved into this nice six bedroom house built in the 1900s in the suburbs. When we first moved in, we didn't make a lot of effort to clean out the two crawl spaces. We basically just shoved more stuff into it. My mom remembers lots of old dolls being in there. 
wonder if there's an attachment to something left behind, because I never found much information about anybody who lived there. It was me, my aunt, my mom, my dad, my grandpa, and my cousins living there. Through the kitchen was my grandfather's room. Through his room was the stairs to the attic, which were enclosed into an L-shape. The attic had been converted into three bedrooms. The room at the top of the stairs was mine, with the tiny door to the first crawl space. To the left was my aunt's room, which had another crawl space. To the right was my parents' room. Sleeping in that middle room was hell on earth. It was really scary, and most of my friends wouldn't stay over because of the things that happened in my room. I thought I was having nightmares or something because I'd always see a shadow figure beside my bed. Once I was playing school with my cat in my room. It was getting hot, so the attic was very warm. I went into my aunt's closet with the cat because I was pretending that he was in detention. <laughs> nice. The door had no lock, but it got jammed. I couldn't get it to open no matter how I tried. Me and my cat could have died after a while because of the heat, but my grandpa came up and let me out with no struggle. The rest of the house was pretty bad, too. I've been in plenty of haunted places, but this house gave you a sense of dread like no other. It felt very menacing and evil. A lot of bad things were happening to my family at that house. I always felt the house fed off negativity. My cousins would party and have 20 people in their room every night. My parents and my aunt fought about it a lot. Once I even had to hide in my parents' room while my half-brother's mom tried to distract me because party guests were threatening each other with guns outside. The basement was creepy. My dad finished one side of it and turned it into a home bar. My grandfather had antique statues of clowns. We had a projector down there and a PS2. I'd sit down there and play games. Once the lights turned off on me and I ran upstairs with this feeling of being chased. Eventually, my grandfather got sick and passed away when I was about eight. My dad needed my grandpa's safe coat to take out important documents. And for some reason, all of the adults thought it would be a good idea to basically do a seance in the attic to try to get rid, or rather, get the safe coat. Like ghosts can just spit out numbers. My aunt, my mom, and my dad, and me, we all took our voice recorders up there. My mom was a member of a local paranormal society at the time. So we ask all of our questions, hear nothing with our ears, and then walk downstairs. We plugged the recorder into our computer and listened through the recording. We didn't hear anything beside ourselves until the part where we're going down the stairs. Then through our crappy computer speaker, we all hear what sounded like my mom, like a laugh, and to me like a womb womb in this deep demonic voice. So maybe more like womb womb. Almost like a pig or something. Nope, I got nothing for that one. My mom said, mm -mm, no more recording upstairs. The only not terrifying experience I had there was feeling someone petting me really gently while laying on my grandfather's recliner. A year or two later, we got a dog, though. I was still sleeping with my mom, but at this point, my dad was always at the bar and slept in the living room. Me and my mom were in her bed and my dog was chewing on a bone. The cast iron 400 pound bed frame started shaking violently. My dog's bone flew into the ground after the shaking started. Called the dog up to the headboard and she came up and laid between us. The bed was shaking for a good minute. My mom said the bone must have caused it. But even then it made no sense. Later she admitted that she didn't want me to be scared checked online the day after and saw that there were no earthquakes in the area and nothing else shook anyways. Just the bed. One night the doors opened between my parents' room and my room. My mom said she saw a shadow figure go from the stairs to the crawlspace door. Years later my parents split and me and my mom moved out and my aunt stayed. Her boyfriend moved in with his kids. Her boyfriend, who is basically my uncle, passed away sadly. My aunt adopted his kids and they lived there still, but my blood cousins and my dad moved out. I went back to visit after he passed and had renovated a lot of the attic. It felt different, a lot less heavy. The entire time I lived there, I'd race up and down the stairs to my room and I felt chased. My aunt asked me if I ever told them anything to scare them. I said no and I asked what she meant. 
I'm a good cousin after all, and she said both the kids race up and down the stairs like I did. A few months later, my dad was thinking about his Komodo dragon print he bought from a local photographer. He remembered he had left it in the crawl space. He texted my aunt asking if she could find it when my aunt got to the top of the stairs. It was neatly placed next to the crawl space door. No one read her text or would know where to find it. I think about the house still. I have nightmares about it, the entity that lived in it. I don't think anything as scary as what we went through has happened since the, well, since being at that house, but I'm not a Christian, but if demons are real, it was in that house. Something tried to enter my room. I, a 16-year-old female, and my brother, a 19-year-old male, were home alone one night. We were messing around and playing video games until 4 a.m. After calling it a night, I went into my room, which is connected to his room by a shared bathroom. I suddenly got an intense feeling that I should probably lock my door. I never lock my door, ever. But for some reason, something inside was screaming. I faintly heard a man making a shh sound, my dog growling slightly, but he didn't bark, which was weird because he always freaks the fuck out whenever somebody comes into the living room, even my brother. Then my doorknob starts rattling violently. Not to your typical trying to open a door rattle, it was crazy like the door handle was tweaking on meth or something. Thought it was my brother playing some stupid trick, but I ran straight to his room through the bathroom in a matter of two seconds. He was still sitting there, headphones on, playing video games. He couldn't possibly have made it back in time. Started shouting hysterically about how it wasn't funny and how he was dead confused. Armed with a flashlight and a Batman action figure, we went back to my room. The doorknob was still high and tweaking on crystal meth. My brother reached out and touched the door and felt a shock. And just like that, the rattling stopped. I slept with my door locked the next couple of nights, though. And it happened another two or three times. But then it just stopped. My brother, on the other hand, thought he became a ghostbuster. And the explanations are debunks. One of the few things in my life I cannot explain. My freshman year of high school, I was living in an area just outside of Austin, Texas. This area was somewhat suburb, somewhat rural, a strange mixture of the two. One feature of this neighborhood I was living in I remember distinctly was on an old rundown barn across the street from me. I could see it from my bedroom window. Its roof was caved in and it was closed off by the city. It used to creep me out during my time there. Anyway, there was a weekend that my parents were out of town. I had the house to myself. I had my best friend would call him Mike over to keep me company and hang out for the night. The whole night went by pretty mundane. Just two teenagers hanging out, playing guitar and watching TV. Mike and I were in the middle of conversation upstairs in the room when suddenly he was cut off by what sounded like a loud belly laugh coming from downstairs. Not a creepy laugh, but like your grandfather was laughing at something genuinely funny. I remember Mike's eyes widening in a way I've never seen. I immediately felt freezing cold with fear. Our initial thought was that somebody had broken in. Maybe a homeless person who frequented that barn I mentioned earlier. We grabbed anything we could use to possibly defend ourselves and mustered up the courage to go downstairs. That's where we were met with nothing. All the lights were off, all doors and windows closed. The TV was off even. No Bluetooth speakers or anything powered on. And what's funny is that the fact that we found nothing scared us even more. Needless to say, we didn't sleep well that night. I never believed in the paranormal until that night. My question to you is, have any of you heard a spirit before? Not an EVP, I mean heard with your ears. Is it possible that I was being haunted. I'm now 17, and these things happened around 10 years ago. But I still haven't gotten a proper explanation for them. So I'll tell you two of the most extreme experiences, and you all can tell me if I'm being haunted or just crazy as fuck. 
The most extreme one happened to me when I was at home. For background, our house has this one long hallway. My room is located in the end of it, directly opposite to my parents' room. Back when I was a little kid, I often had trouble sleeping, and every time I woke up in the middle of the night, I went to sleep next to my mom and dad. This one night I had once again woken up somewhere after midnight. I wanted to sleep next to my parents. Like I said, getting to their room requires me to cross the hallway. So I got up, walked out of my room. I'm not sure why, but I looked to my left, otherwise known as the other end of the hallway, and I saw my mom there. She was slowly walking toward me, but I knew something was off and that she isn't my mother. My parents' bedroom door was open, and when I looked there, I saw my mom sleeping peacefully next to my dad. Of course, I double-checked to see if I really saw something, and yes, I did. My mother-looking thing was still there, and it was getting closer to me. This, obviously, scared the living shit out of me. So I quickly ran to the bedroom and went to lay between my mom and my dad. Thank God whatever it was didn't follow me there. Still, to this day the hallway scares me. And sometimes when I'm alone I get that feeling that someone's watching me. I guess what I saw back then traumatized me a little bit. The two other happened at our cottage. It's a nice little house on an island surrounded by sea. The room I used to sleep in is super small, has two beds in there, a twin bed and a bunk bed. As always, I was sleeping in the bottom bed, and at some point of the night I woke up and felt like I was being watched. On the other end of the bed was something. It was some kind of a shadow creature. Pitch black skin, fully white eyes, wide smile. The only movement it had was when it breathed. Again, I checked multiple times if it was actually there, and each time it was. The only exit was right next to it, so I couldn't even get out of the room. I ended up hiding under my blanket. After some time, I finally looked again, and it was gone. There were no pillows or anything, just the wall. After those two, I've had some smaller things happen, like seeing shadows or hearing some voices and getting those there's someone feelings when I'm alone, but nothing as extreme as those. I've always been very interested in paranormal stuff, but I don't know what to believe and if I should forget what I saw back then. The only things I know for sure are that are facts is that I really saw them and I certainly was not asleep when I did. And if you are not asleep when you should be, which is now, drop a comment. See ya.